Hey guys, welcome back to another video with InfoSec Path. I know it's been quite a bit of time since I've made my last video, but today what we're going to be talking about is OpenVOS, the virtual appliance. What I'm going to be doing is installing it, showing you guys how to download it, configure it, and we're going to do everything with VMware Workstation today. So if you're ready to get into the video, let's get into it. Hello guys, welcome back. All right, so in this video, what we're gonna be doing is installing OpenVOS Virtual Appliance. So let's get started. So on here, I wanna give you this link down below. Once you go to openvos.org, you can click on here, it says try out, it says Virtual Appliance. We can click on Virtual Appliance. And once you hit on Virtual Appliance, you'll get here. I'll go ahead and zoom this in a little bit. Okay, so this, <clears throat> this link right here is the ISO file that we're going to be using to install it. I already have the ISO file downloaded, as you see right here. It's in my ISO, my uh, OpenVOS ISO folder on my eDrive. So I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to be downloading it in here. So the compatibility, you can use VirtualBox or ESXi or VMware Workstation, like I'm going to be uh, installing it on today. The minimum requirements is two CPU cores and four gigs of RAM. Okay, so that's your minimum requirements for the physical machine. So when you go ahead and here, when you go down a little bit, you can see startup um, community edition. So the virtual image you can use, the hypervisor you can use is Hyper-V. Um, and this is like the configuration, you can use gen one, four gigs of memory, uh, use dynamic memory, deactivate, etc., etc. if you're using Hyper-V. Go down and you can go ahead and use ESXi or VMware like we're gonna be doing here. And and the virtual box by hand, I guess basically follow the same hints. So, you know, Linux, other other versions, 64 bits, 64 gigs of RAM, 18 gigs of disk space, two CPUs, uh, create a new disk, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're gonna go ahead and do this whole process. So first things first, let's go ahead and open up our virtual bot, uh, virtual bot, uh, VMware workstation. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and go to file, new virtual machine. I'm gonna go ahead and do typical, should be fine. I wanna go ahead and browse to the ISO file that we downloaded and my ISO file is right here. So I wanna go ahead and open it, go to next. I wanna go to Linux, other Linux, Right, because if that if you remember correctly, it said other Linux 64-bit, right? So that should be fine. Other Linux, and then we're gonna do 64-bit right here. Okay. So this should be good. Go to next, and I want to name this OpenVOS dash VM. And I'm gonna put these VMDK files and all my virtual machine files in a different location. I'm gonna put them in, in another, another spot where we're gonna do here, here, here. So I'm gonna throw it right in this directory, okay? So we go ahead and paste that so we can do that, that path and go to next. For hard drive, I wanna put 20 gigs. Okay, go to next. I want to customize my hardware because we're gonna have to make some changes. If you remember, you need four gigs of memory, but I want to put eight because I have the, the capacity. Go ahead and put two CPUs. I want to use NAT, network address translation for my network adapter. My USB, if you remember here, let's go ahead and go back here. We can take out, we can disable audio, USB and floppy, okay? So USB controller, we can remove. Sound, we can remove. Printer, we can remove. Okay, we, we don't have any floppies in here. I think in VirtualBox, they have it enabled by default. All right, so let's go ahead and hit close here and finished, okay? So once this starts up and once it creates it, we can go ahead and power this bad boy on and we can start um, going through the installation. So we'll give this a minute. We can go back to um, the installation. 
screen uh, the installation uh, page on OpenVAS. So now you can just choose the image. That's what we did, and then we're gonna hit setup. So now we're now we're here. So now we're just gonna go through the setup. From my experience, I I um I did this about a uh, about a month ago at my company. And oh, maybe it was a little longer than a month ago. Maybe it was my first, yeah, about three months ago. And this whole process from soup to nuts, getting the download in the feeds, everything took about an hour and a half. Like, let's see, I think it shows something like here. After the feeds complete, um, the sec info area, which I'll show you guys once it's done, it can take up to a half hour or even longer. It all depends on your internet speed. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So. Let's go ahead, we're gonna we're right here. So let's go ahead and go back. And this is where we are, the setup. So let's go ahead and hit OK on the setup. And are you sure you want to install it? Yes, I do. And we'll give this a minute, okay? And now we can, we can go back to here. And if, if you have two screens, that's beneficial because you can have one thing on one screen and then you can watch the video on another. Just, you know, if you have the luxury of having that. So. In the menu, we're gonna choose setup, that's what we did, to confirm the hard drive that we can override just in case you, you know, if you have any data, if you're doing this on a physical box, if you have data on there, it's gonna warn you, saying you're gonna be wiping out that data. And, you know, obviously in a virtual environment, you don't have that because you're just creating a new VDI or VMDK or whatever. All right, so, and then, you know, this process will take some time. And I'll ask you to create a username and password. Okay, so in my case, I already wrote down some stuff, um, and I can share it with you. I think I'm just guessing at this point, but we can check the the fourth octet in this IP. Um, this will be the IP address of the web portal once it's up and running. And for the web, I want to create a user called Infosec Pat, and my password is going to be. Uh, password 2020 with a capital P. An admin, and this is gonna be the setup info, okay? And it's gonna be admin and I wanna create it 2020. So we'll see that shortly. Okay, let's go back and see where we stand on the setup. We'll just give this a few minutes. Once this is uh, proceeds, it will go ahead and give us the information to set up. As you can see here, you can visit greenbone.net to learn more about the commercial appliance and obviously we're not using the commercial one, we're just using the community edition. So in that case, let's see, in that case we're, we're okay. So for example, secure, okay, perfect. Uh, so this is the username that I was talking about right here. I wanna be creating admin and then this is gonna be my password, okay? So let's go ahead and hit enter here. I'm just gonna leave it as admin and my password is gonna be password 2020, hit okay. And that's gonna go, and you successfully set up your your GSM. So go ahead and yes, I want to reboot now. And yes, we can inject the ISO file. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll let that reboot. And while that reboots, it's gonna say it's gonna to continue to set up. It's gonna to have to do some configuration in the back end. Um, we'll see that shortly. I'll show you what I mean uh, once this reboots, and it'll tell tell us the host login. But you know we're not going to be able to log in yet, right here. Local host login installation in progress. Do not try to log in, and the machine will reboot any moment. So we'll give that a few minutes, and we'll go back to the to the page. So so pretty much this is this is where we're at. The following instructions, and the system will automatically reboot a second time, and then we'll get the welcome, and then now we'll, at this point we'll go ahead and create the um the login for the web user and all that stuff all right but this you know, this is going to take a few minutes to do and it's going to reboot and then it'll continue to do its thing all right so and in the meantime the reason why i'm you know i was requested this video and i figured i want to do this video with the virtual appliance is because i created an open VOS video series i think it was three parts in cali linux I think it was 2020.1. And I was getting a lot of feedback, positive, but there were some people that saying they had issues, you know, setting it up. Maybe they had some misconfiguration. 
and it's hard to address every single one, every single person that's having a problem um, because I don't know where they were in the process when they get errors and blah blah blah. So what I you know thought about doing, I'm like, okay, the OpenBus VM virtual appliance is so much better. It's smooth as hell, right? So why not just take this VM, deploy it, and show you guys how to set it up? And you don't have to do all this configuration in Kali Linux to get this all up and running. So it's so much better. I think it's so much smoother. It runs a lot better. So, you know, this is the reason why I did this. But if you want to learn how to do it while this is doing its thing, we can go to my YouTube channel. Let's go to my YouTube channel. I have it up open here. So if you, you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, like the video if you like it, if you have any requests about any technology that you want to learn, if I'm proficient with it, uh, I'm more than happy to make a video for you or help you with anything that I can with. So, so let's go ahead and go to playlist. All right. So in my playlist, I have InfoSec Pat Linux videos. I believe it's in here. Yes, it is. So I have 17 videos in here, but I have this video here which says how to install and set up OpenVos vulnerability scanner in Kali Linux 2020.1. This is the first video of this series. Let's go ahead and skip this ad. We don't have to watch. And um, this is this is this guy. But um, so as you can see, we can go ahead and, you know, right there, I'm just updating the operating system. Uh, obviously, with 2020, you have to use sudo. And I did that on purpose, I think, just so you guys can see the permissions or whatever. So, you know, if you want to learn how to do it inside of Kali, you know, you can go ahead and, you know, follow these videos. It's three videos. And I even scan a Windows operating system to show you guys how it actually works. All right. So we'll let that do its thing. And let's get back back to business. So here is the GSM login, which is in the admin. That's the and then password 2020. And that's gonna say welcome to the Greenboat Greenbone OS. All right, so now your GSM is not fully functional yet. Do you want to continue to set it up? Yes, I do. Hit yes. And then now we need to create a uh, web interface user. And I want to make it infosec pat. And then my password. Let me make sure I type that in right. All right, so the password is password 2020. It's created. So on this point right here, it says there's no subscription key for the Greenbow security feed install. That's perfectly fine. We can skip this. You don't need to have any subscription key for the community edition. So I want to go ahead and skip. Okay. So once you skip, there's uh, there's no present feeds. This is perfectly fine. Yes, I want to go ahead and download them and hit OK here. So now it's going to perform some system check. And while it's performing that system check, we can go ahead and go back to, all right, so before we go back to the, the, the website, and if it says this, if you get this, this uh, feed update not possible, the server is not reachable, that's fine, it is reachable. The reason being, I know because, for an example, we can go ahead and try to ping the address. Uh, is it not that address? I don't even know, give me one second. Hit okay. And then we'll go to about, and it's 61. So we'll give this, uh, oh, maybe ARP. That's probably why. So now it is reachable, okay? So we'll give this some time. As you see here, the system operation update feed is currently, is running currently. So let's go ahead and hit okay here. And we'll let that do its thing, okay? And now let's go back to the the um, the setup. This is pretty much the steps. So the subscription key, you know, you can download fee without um, having one. So the feed, you, you know, the feed runs in the up in the background and does its updating and all that stuff. So we can look at that here. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. And so let's go ahead and log into it. All right. So let's go ahead and just go to 192.168.100.61, okay? If you do get this warning potential security risk, that's perfectly fine. It is because you have a self-signed certificate on that open VOS box, all right? So let's go ahead and hit advance and then go ahead and accept the risk and continue. 
So this is the this is the this is the web UI. So the web UI we're going to log in as info.pat and then the password that we set up, all right? So this is it. This is everything that we we have in here. So now we go to configuration, excuse me, administration and feed status. You can see the feed status here. Once this done, once it starts replicating and propagating, you'll see more feeds. And if we go to infosec or uh, second info, all second info, we'll see some stuff propagating here, as you can see in here. Uh, we're pretty much here. We're logged in. We can see everything during the installation. Self signed certificate was created, so you know it's going to be insecure, just like I just told you. Um, only after the feed is complete, you can see the infosec area and the first scans are possible. So until all the feeds are installed and on your green bone, you're not going to be able to run in and scan anyway. So this can take up to a half hour to an hour, like I said prior. So we'll give this some time and that's pretty much concludes the video. And this is the way you shut down the machine. So as we see here, go back to administration. We can refresh this as you, um, depending on your internet speed, this can take, like you said, up to 30 minutes to an hour to start seeing some stuff. And then once you, uh, once you have all your CVEs and all that stuff propagated, you can, you know, run some scans. One last thing I want to show you guys, if you go to administration and you go to performance, this is pretty cool. So say for example, if you think the machine's running slow, things aren't responding correctly. You can look at the processes. You can see what's going on. Obviously this is a brand new machine, so you know we don't really have too much start and end time. But you can see the system load, you can see the CPU utilization. Um, obviously we have two CPUs on here as we allocated. We allocated eight gigs of RAM, so you can see the RAM that's utilizing in here. Um, the swap file, the, the file system usage, Etc. You know, if you if you ever use like any Linux-based uh, uh, monitoring tool like Cacti or Nagios or something like that, it's pretty much the same kind of uh, configs. So that concludes the video. Uh, let's just go back here. Yep, it's it's still going. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, if you have any questions or any concerns about this video or any the process, hit me up on my social media. Um, you can hit me up on my Instagram. You know, leave a message below and I'm more than happy to help you guys out. All right, until next time, have a wonderful day and uh, be safe out there. Thank you.